Hi, welcome back. And today we're going to talk about, is the rapture real? But before we begin, let's open in a word of prayer. Father, thank you for uh, giving us answers for every topic in your word. And, and this, frankly, has been kind of a controversial thing. And in recent times, there's been a falling away. And at one time, people believed that there was going to be a rapture. But now uh, people are doubtful because just as you said, in the last day, there would be scoffers saying, where's the promise of his coming? And yet we know that your word is true. And God, God, you said, let God be true and every man a liar, that thou mightest be justified in thy sins when thou art judged. So I pray that you would give us an understanding on this topic and let the Holy Spirit speak the truth through your word. And we thank you. It's in the name of Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen. Okay, uh, we're going to talk about this. And I've, I've, this isn't my first time dealing with this situation. I realize that no matter what I say, no matter how many verses I share with you, there's still gonna, there will be those of you that will believe that, that the church is still going through the tribulation period. And even if Jesus, John, or the Apostle Paul told you right to your face that no, the church is going to be raptured out, uh, and you will miss the tribulation. It's not for you. You're safe in the wrath to come. You still wouldn't believe it. So this uh, this lesson is only for those that have ears to hear and that have the open mind and willingness to examine what the scripture says, not your opinion or what someone else has told you to believe. And if you don't agree with this, uh, the comment section will not be available for you. This is not open for an argument or a debate. I'm just going to give you what the word says. And you have to argue with the scripture so what sayeth the scripture? And uh, let me let me backtrack a little bit. I know that they, there's those that you that will say, well, the word rapture isn't even in the Bible. Well, we know that there's a Greek word that that imply that is a transliteration of into the word rapture. I under I understand that, but you know that the word uh, Trinity, which we all use, is not found in the Bible either. So that's kind of a poor argument. Uh, maybe snatching away or taken up, it, which is exactly what the King James Bible says, is another thing. Another another argument that they try to hold up is that the early church never taught the, the rapture. Well, that's that's not true at all. I recommend you to read Dispensationalism Before Darby. Uh, it, it gives you a lot of information in here, and actually, that's that's not true. Uh, the the rapture, uh, maybe it wasn't named a rapture, but the teaching that the church would be taken up into a cloud before the tribulation has been taught in the first centuries. Also, I recommend this book by uh, Dr. Ken Johnson on the rapture. He gives some uh, information as well, historical information on the teaching of the rapture. So it's nothing new. And uh, you can have your arguments, and it's fine. And I still love you, the Lord, because one way or another, if you're saved, we're all going to meet together. And probably some of you will be disappointed when the rapture happens and you uh, miss the tribulation. It seems like that's the way it is these days. But nevertheless, we are looking for Jesus Christ, not for the things coming. We're not looking for the Antichrist. We're looking for the blessed hope and glorious appearing of Jesus Christ. Now, let me read you some passages, and you can just let the Holy Spirit confirm. Maybe you're still in doubt, and you've been listening to the, the naysayers saying, no, you're not going uh, to a rapture, and you're going through the tribulation period. Well, Jesus said this in John 10, verses 1 through 10, Verily, verily, I say unto you, He that entereth not by the door, and remember that word, the door, that's a key word, into the sheepfold, but climbeth up some other way, the same as a thief and a robber. So the only way to get to heaven is through Jesus Christ. The only way to get above the firmament, the, the only way, not through NASA, not through SpaceX, anyone that climbs up any other way is a thief and a robber. But he that entereth in by the door, remember that, the door, is the shepherd of the sheep. To him the porter open up, openeth up, the sheep hear his voice. He calleth his own sheep by name and leadeth them out. Where's he leading him out of? Leading him out of this world for something that else, for something else that's coming in for these thieves and robbers that are going to take over this this world during the tribulation period for seven years. And and notice he he they they go with up and and listen to this. The Bible says in verse four of John ten it says when he put it forth 
his own sheep, he goeth before them, and the sheep follow him, for they know his voice. And a stranger will they not follow, so they're not going to be part of this Antichrist system, but will flee from him, for they know the voice of strain for they know not the voice of strangers. This parable spake Jesus unto them, but they understood not what things they were which he spake unto them, because the, the mystery of the church had not been revealed yet, the, the the mystery of the rapture had not been revealed, so that it was kind of a perplexing thing to them. Although it was even mentioned in the Old Testament, I'm going to give you some Old Testament scriptures on the rapture as well. Jesus says, I am the door. By me, if any man enter in, he shall be saved and shall go in and out and find pasture. So you're going to uh, go in and out and in and out through the rapture and find pasture in the millennial reign. It says, the thief cometh not, but for to steal and to kill and to destroy. I am come that they might have life and that they might have it more abundantly. Does it sound like uh, if we are, if Jesus is the door, he's the way, does it sound like the church is going to go through a, a period of, of tribulation, the great tribulation? No. And, and in our Zechariah 5, if you go to that video, Zechariah 5, you'll see what I mean about the Antichrist being the thief that comes in, that Jesus is going to take his church out of. Now let's look at this door a little more closely. Revelation chapter 4. Now John, remember, he was a companion, a brother first, and a companion, he says, uh, and a witness of the things uh, of the tribulation and the rapture. Remember, Jesus said, some of you will be left, some of you will not taste death till you see the coming of the Son of Man, because John got to see, he got to experience what it was like to be part of the body of Christ, uh, participate in the rapture of the church, and from the vantage point of heaven, being able to see the events of the tribulation unfold. Well, he's our companion and brother. And so he got to see both things before he, he tasted physical death. Now let's look at this door. He says in Revelation 4, before that, the, the church was mentioned. After that, the church is not mentioned one time. As a matter of fact, you hear about Israel and the saints around the world, but nothing about the church. The churches are missing completely on purpose after Revelation chapter 4. And you can watch my Revelation chapter 4 video, and I kind of go into this as well in the rapture. But he says, after this, I looked and behold a door. Who is the door? Jesus Christ. He even said, a door was opened in heaven. And the first voice, remember, he says, I, the sheep hear his voice. The first voice which I heard was as if it were a trumpet talking with me, which said, Come up hither, and I will show thee things which must be hereafter. Hereafter what? Hereafter the rapture of the church. It's so plain. Let the Holy Spirit, let that get into your mind and let that sink in. That's what it is. And you know what? In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, John says, And immediately I was in the Spirit, and behold... A throne was set in heaven. There's the judgment seat. And one sat on the throne. And he that sat on the throne was to look uh, was to look upon like a jasper and a sardine stone. And there was a rainbow round about the throne. And we know the world has a different meaning on this rainbow. They perverted and twisted it. But in the purest form, this rainbow on top of the firmament, uh, this bow appears in sight like an, an emerald. And here you have the Wizard of Oz imitating the Emerald City. All of these things are imitations of the real thing. And round about the throne were four and twenty seats. And upon the seats I saw four and twenty elders sitting, now listen to this, clothed in white raiment, and they had on their heads crowds of gold, as if the judgment seat had already taken place. And the rewards don't come till after the judgment seat. So they can't get their crowns until after that. So now you see the rapture. Taking up, John was taken up, and then you see the crowns and the rewards on these uh, these elders, which represent uh, the church. Now let's see what Paul says about the rapture. Now you see what John says. John told you that he was a he was his companion, he was a witness of the things of the the rapture, and he was caught up. He didn't say the word rapture, but he told you what happens. Now let's look at Paul. He said, in first, and we heard what Jesus said. Now we heard we heard John. Now let's hear what Paul said. In 1 Thessalonians 4, verses 13 through 18. But I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren. Fortunately, many people are ignorant of this topic. 
But G uh, Paul said, I wish you weren't that way. But he says, concerning them which are asleep, that ye sorrow not, even as others which have no hope. Because the, the, there's, even though this dispensation of the church has been going on many, many years, not everybody will taste the rapture. But they have, and it doesn't call it death necessarily, but they're sleeping. They're resting in Jesus. And it says, sorrow not, even as others which have no hope. Verse 14, for if we believe, is that you? Do you believe that Jesus died and rose again? Okay, I do. Do you? Even so, them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. With him where? For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. But we won't come before them because Jesus will bring them with him. And his sheep. he's already got them in his sheepfold. For the Lord himself, shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel. Remember, John heard that as well. And with the trump of God. John said, I heard as if it were a voice of a trumpet. And the dead in Christ shall rise first, be reunited with their bodies in, in the air. And it says, then we which are alive and remain, if you are alive and remain at this event, shall be caught up together. Now, he didn't say rapture, but he said caught up. If you want to use that term, so be it. You don't have to use the word rapture, but you'll be caught up together with them, that say in the air and, and Judea, no, in the clouds, in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. Wherefore, uh, look for the tribulation, endure to the end. No, he said, wherefore, comfort one another with these words. I mean, what a comfort is it if you are going around telling everybody that you've got to endure to the end? that you have to go through this tribulation period, that you avoid the mark of the beast. Paul never, first of all, Paul never mentions the mark of the beast one time. And so, yet, we are to comfort one another with these words. I, I think I'm going to stick with Paul and what the Holy Spirit has spoken to us through the words that he inspired through Paul and not uh, these heretical teachings. You may disagree, and that's fine. Because the Bible says, let him that be ignorant... Uh, if him that is ignorant, let him be ignorant still. I, I don't care at this point. I'm going to stick with the Word of God. I'm just not going to let it destroy my faith in the Word of God. Now, 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 15 through 55, Paul said this, Now this I say, brethren, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God. It's You can't go to God in this in the this these ter current uh, statuses with our, our flesh and blood bodies, it says, "Neither doth corruption inherit uh, in corruption." Behold, I show you a mystery, because people couldn't figure it out then. So Paul's trying to explain it. We shall not all sleep, so not all of us are going to die, but we shall all be changed in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye. Remember, J John said immediately, "I was caught up in the spirit." Uh, Paul, uh, Paul said, the Lord shall descend, and we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in clouds. Now he further says, in the moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound, and the dead in Christ shall be raised incorruptible, and then what? And we shall be changed immediately in the spirit. As John and Paul now, they both testify. And this mortal must put on immortality, so when this corruptible shall have put on incorruption, this mortal shall have put on immor or immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, Death is swallowed up in victory. O death, where is thy sting? O grave, where is thy victory? No death. There's, there's going to be, some, there's gonna be a, a group of people that will not taste of death. Now I know the Bible says, As it is appointed unto men once to die, but after this the judgment. Well, two things. First of all, you have a group of people like Lazarus that died twice. Uh, yeah, he was appointed once to die, but Lazarus was brought from the dead and then he died again. Enoch, he never tasted death. He went up and was translated. He, he was raptured before the flood, a type of the tribulation period. And he never tasted death. So there are exceptions, but that's the general rule. Yes. Now we are the exception. That's why it's a mystery. And that's why Paul is trying to tell us about this mystery. Now, Isaiah Isaiah 57. It was a mystery in the Old Testament, but Isaiah told us in Isaiah 57, verses 1 through 2, The righteous perish, perisheth, and no man layeth it to heart. 
and merciful men, merciful men are taken away, a rapture, none considering that the righteous is taken away from the evil to come. There's going to be a rapture where it's going to, we are made righteous through the blood of Jesus Christ, not our own righteousness. We are living by the righteousness and faith of Jesus Christ. And we'll be taken away from the evil to come, the tribulation period. And he shall enter into peace and they shall rest in their beds, each one walking in his uprightness. So it's pretty clear when you see after the the mystery of the, the rapture, the great taking away has been revealed, you, you can make sense of these Old Testament passages. Now let's read another one in Song of Solomon, chapter 2, verses 8 through 13. The voice of my beloved, Jesus, the door, he cometh leaping upon the mountains. He's, he's coming down through the top of the firmament, skipping upon the hills. My beloved is like a roe or a young heart. Behold, he standeth behind our wall, the firmament. He looketh forth at the windows. There's windows in the firmament. Remember, uh, Ezekiel talked about them. Uh, and and Moses talked about them when the, the fountains of the great deep, the windows of heaven were opened, let the, the water from, from above come through to flood out the earth, showing himself through the lattice. There's different layers of this firmament. My beloved, Jesus Christ, said unto me, rise up, the voice of my beloved says, rise up, my love, my fair one, and come away. He's taking him up. He's rapturing him out. For lo, the winter is past, the rain is gone, rain is over and gone, uh, the time of the, uh, the, before the harvest, the flowers appear on the earth, so whatever, whenever this happens, it'll happen in the springtime, the time of the singing of the birds has come, and the voice of the turtle is heard in our land, the fig tree, Israel, put it forth her green figs, remember Israel, Jerusalem is the capital of Israel, Israel is about ready to be part of the focus again. And the vines with the tender grape give a good smell. Arise, my love, my fair one, the body of Christ, and come away. It's really plain. You can't miss it when you see it through the eyes of the Holy Spirit with the mystery being revealed the way the Apostle Paul revealed it. It's so clear. You see the flat earth. You see the firmament. You see that it will be in the springtime. Now, I've got a, a thing on this. Maybe I'll do a video on this in the future, but... Remember when Jesus was caught up a rapture at the end of his 40 days and 40 nights. Remember the angel said, in like manner shall he return. So one of my thoughts is possibly after 40 days of the resurrection of Easter, Easter time, the resurrection, 40 days he will he return at that time. And it, it's kind of interesting that it says uh, the winter is past, the rain is over, and the flowers appear on the earth, which would kind of closely fit this time period, which means uh, the rapture could be very soon. I hope it's this year. I hope it's even sooner than that. If I'm wrong, I hope so. I just hope it happens very quickly. I don't want to go through the tribulation period, and we're not going to if you're in the body of Christ. But just apply all these passages now. Let's look at Job 37, verses uh, 1 through one through 5. At this also, my heart melt, my heart trembleth, and is moved out of his place. Hear attentively the, noi the noise of his voice, and the sound that goeth out of his mouth. He, direct he directeth it under the whole heaven, and his lightning under the ends of the earth. After it, after it a voice roareth, he thundereth with the voice of excellency, and will not stay them when his voice is heard. When his voice at the the voice of the archangel, the trump of God, when that happens, he will not stay them. They will not be left behind when his voice is heard. God thundereth marvelously with his voice. Great things doeth he, which cannot be, uh, we cannot comprehend. It's a mystery. They, they didn't understand it in the Old Testament. But great things, when that rapture, the body of the Christ happens and we are taken up. And then the, the tribulation happens. Uh, I mentioned earlier that Enoch is a picture of the body of Christ going through the uh, the rapture of the church, uh, the rapture before the tribulation, and also the Exodus is a type of the the rapture of the church before before the tribulation happens. And ironically, there will be a simultaneous thing where uh, where if you liken the rapture with uh, Pharaoh. Uh, the, the body of Christ passes through the firmament, the Red Sea parts, right? We go up through the, the, the sea, 
that's up above, the water's up above. And what happens, remember? Pharaoh's chasing right after them. And when we are raptured up, the devil's coming right after us. Remember, the the Bible said that Moses, dis, that uh, Satan disputed over the body of Moses when he took the body up, right? Well, Satan's coming up, and then there's a great war in heaven. And then, just like the the Red Sea engulfed uh, Pharaoh and his army, well, uh, it's going to close again, this war in heaven, and Michael and his archangels will defeat um, the dragon and his angels, they will not be able to, to go back up. They'll be confined to this earth. They will not be uh, able to, to go into the heavenly places again. So all of those are pictures and types of the rapture of the church. I hope you can see that now. Let me close with some, some verses. Colossians 2, 13 through 15 says this, And you being dead in your sins and the uncircumcision of your flesh, hath he quickened together, quickened together, with him having forgiven you all his trespasses. Does that, sound, does that sound like somebody that would God would be judging in the tribulation period? Blotting out the handwriting of ordinances that was against us, which was contrary to us, and took it out of the way, nailing it to his cross. Our sins are nailed to the cross. And having spoiled principalities and powers, he made a show of them openly, triumphing over them in it. The church is victorious over the devil in this dispensation of the church age. Jesus said this in Matthew 16, 18, and, and I say also unto thee, thou art Peter, and upon this rock will I build my church. And guess what? He says, the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. We have already overcome. The church has already overcome. But in Revelation 13, verses 7 through 8, there will be another group that will be left behind. These two groups cannot be the same. It says, in verses 7 and 8, it says, And it was given unto him to make war with the saints. After the devil's cast down, he can't get this group, the church, he can't prevail against them. Their place was found no more in heaven. Michael and his archangels defeated them. They're confined to this earth. Now it says, And it was given unto him to make war with the saints, the, the tribulation saints, the 144,000, and to overcome them. Now, you can't overcome the Jesus said the, the gates of hell will not prevail against them. The church, but this group of people will be overcome. They will be martyred. And it says, And power was given over them, over all kindreds and tongues and nations, and all them that dwell upon the earth, because the devil is confined to this earth, shall worship him whose names are not written in the book of life of the Lamb slain from the foundation of the world. I mean, once you once you see it, you can unsee it. And I hope this has been an encouragement. Again, I encourage you to read Dispensationalism before Darby. The Rapture by um, Dr. Ken Johnson. And look at those books. There's many other books as well. They give some resources in the back of their books to look and study. But don't take my word for it. Don't take their word for it. Believe what the Holy Ghost has shown you through his word clearly. And I hope that I hope you are encouraged and happy and actually excited because, yeah, we see the end coming. But that means we are about, this bus is about ready to stop. And this is our, this is our, our stop. And we're about ready to to reach glory and be transformed in a moment in the twinkling of an eye. So let's close in a word of prayer. Father, thank you for your word. Thank you for giving us this truth today. I pray for those that may were on the fence on this, that after this lesson, that they would be confirmed in their mind and assured that we are not going through the tribulation period. And for those that are still doubting, I mean, I pray for them. I pray for their uh, just encouragement and just uh, give them a peace of mind, even if they don't believe it. We're still, we'll still, we will all still see you someday. And I thank you for that. For it's in the name of Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen. Thanks for watching this video. I hope you have a wonderful day. God bless.